let's just jump right in. So we'll just be going through questions. And as I solve the questions, I'll be discussing important topics. Um, so the main thing that I will be discussing, I'll be talking about, talking about linear equations, intercepts, point slope form, slope intercept form, the distance formula, the midpoint formula, and a few word problems. That's if I get to all this. Um, so it's, yeah, scheduled for one hour. So we'll see how, how many I can get through. All right, so the first one here that we have is basically to um, find the x and y intercepts without graphing. So we have a number of equations on this slide, and we're basically supposed to find the x and y intercepts without graphing anything. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing to note about this, when you're talking about x and y intercepts, for your x intercept, so if, if we just look at a just a basic, um, let's say we had a graph that looked like this um, and we were going to draw some kind of line, okay? So let's say we had this line, okay? Your x-intercept refers to this point right here where your line meets the x-axis. So that's why it's called the x-intercept. It intercepts where the line intercepts the x-axis. And this point right here is your, y uh, your y-intercept, um, and this is the point where the graph or the line um, intercepts the y-axis, where it meets the y-axis, right? And this is a special point because it has a special format all the time. Now, if this is the x-axis, y is going to be zero along this line. And along this entire line, your y is going to be zero. This point right here is your origin. The middle is zero. And so y is zero along this line. So all your x-intercepts will always look like this. Some x and then your y coordinate is going to be zero. And it's got kind of similar for the y intercept, except it's switched. So here, x is going to be zero, right? So you're going to have zero and then some y. So all your y intercepts are going to look like this. Okay, so we're going to use this concept to figure out the x intercepts um, of these lines, these lines that we have here. And we're going to substitute. Um, when we're looking for the x-intercepts, we're just going to make y zero and then solve that for x. And then when we're looking for the y-intercepts, we're going to make x zero and then solve for y. That's basically what we're going to do. So let's start with the first one. So the first one says y is equal to three, negative 3x three plus 6. So this is our equation. And um, we're supposed to find the x-intercepts and then the y-intercepts. Okay, so if I have my equation here for my x-intercept, and then I'm going to put that here for my y-intercept. So what happens at my x-intercept? So again, y is equal to zero at my um, x-intercept. So I know y is equal to zero. So if y is equal to zero, I'm just gonna plug that in right here where I have y is equal to negative three x plus six. So I get zero is equal to negative three x plus six. Now I only have one letter in there and I can solve for that letter. So I'm going to um, subtract six from both sides of this equation. So minus six, because I wanna find X. I'm trying to find X. So I'm gonna get rid of everything else but X. So first I subtract six from both sides. So that gives me zero minus six, negative six is equal to, here I get negative three X. Um, and then six minus six is just zero. So plus zero. So now I have this left. S negative six is equal to negative three X. Again, I'm getting rid of everything else but X. Um, this is negative three times X. So to get rid of that, I do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So I divide this by negative three. I divide this by negative three as well. And so I end up with um, two is equal to X, right? So X is equal to two. All right, because that's negative six divided by negative three. Okay, so once I have that, now my point is actually, since X is two, I have two and zero, right? It's always some x and then zero. So two, zero for the x-intercept. And then I do something similar for the y. So y is, um, for y-intercept, x is equal to zero. So I substitute that in here. So I get y is equal to negative three times zero plus six. Negative three times zero is just zero. So I get y is equal to six, right? Um, so kind of um, doing that here, that gives me the point zero, six. Okay, cool. All right, so let's try the next one. I'm gonna skip number six, we're gonna do number seven. So that is three X minus two Y is equal to six. 
So again, I'm going to have my X intercept and then my Y intercept. Okay. So as a reminder, at the X intercept, Y is equal to zero. At the Y intercept, X is equal to zero. Okay. So if Y is equal to zero, I have three X minus two times zero is equal to six. So two times zero is just zero. So I have left three X is equal to six, right? So now I just want to find X. So I get rid of everything else, but X, um, here I have three times X. So to get rid of that, I do the opposite, which is division. I divide by three on both sides to keep my balance in my equation. And so this cancels out the three. So I'm left with X is equal to six divided by three, which is two. So this gives me the point X is two. So I have two zero because y is zero okay and then when i'm looking at my y uh, y intercept x is zero so i substitute that so three times zero minus two y is equal to six so three times zero is just zero so i get negative two y is equal to six now i want to find y so i divide by negative two and then i divide this also by negative two so i end up with this cancels out so i get y is equal to negative three so my point here is gonna be zero, negative three. Okay, so that's it for number seven. All right, we're gonna skip number eight and then go to number nine. All right, so for number nine, I have three X plus eight Y is equal to nine. Again, X intercept and Y intercept. At the X intercept, Y is zero. At the y-intercept, x is zero. So here I have three x plus eight times zero is equal to nine. Eight times zero is just zero. So I have three x is equal to nine. Um, and to figure out what x is, I divide by three, divide by three. So x is equal to three. And then here I substitute zero for x. So I have three times zero plus eight y is equal to nine. That gives me three times zero is zero. So that gives me eight Y is equal to nine. So I have, um, I divide by eight, divide by eight and Y is equal to nine over eight. Um, so my point here is zero, nine over eight. And then my point here, I forgot to do this one. This is three, zero. Cool. All right, so we'll do the last one for this one. So this one, this one looks a little bit complicated but it's not, it's still the same concept. All right, so 2x minus 2 over 3 is equal to 3 over 4y plus 3. So x intercept again, y intercept. At the x intercept, y is equal to 0. At the y intercept, x is equal to 0. So once we have that, we can figure it out. Um, so here, y is 0. So we're going to substitute that here. Um, I'm actually going to need more space for this one. So just give me one second. I'm going to do them separately. Okay. So for this one, this first one, the x-intercept, y is zero. So 2x minus 2 over 3 is equal to 3 over 4 times 0 plus 3. 3 over 4 times 0 is just 0. So I'm only left with 3 on this side, right? And then I have 2x minus 2 over 3 on this side. Okay. So now to figure out what X is, I have to get rid of everything but X, right? Because I want X is equal to something. So 2X minus 2 over 3 is equal to 3. I add 2 over 3 to this side. I also do the same thing over here. Add 2 over 3 to this side. Um, so minus 2 over 3 plus 2 over 3, that just gives me 0. So I have 2X left is equal to 3 plus 2 over 3. Now for 3 plus 2 over 3, um, Three is a whole number, two over three is a fraction. Um, so what we could do is we can convert this one to a fraction and we should make sure our fraction is over three so that we can just add the numerators, the tops of the fraction. So three is the same as um, nine over three, right? Because nine divided by three is three. So those are the same thing. And how did I do that? Well, three is equal to three over one. So I multiplied the top by three, the bottom also by three. And that gave me nine over three. So I know that those are equal. And what I multiplied by three over three is just equal to one. So I didn't change the number. 
So if three is equal to nine over three, I can make this nine over three plus two over three. And that makes it easy for me because this is 11 over three. All right, so I'm gonna come here and put that here. I have 11 over three um, for that. And so I have two X is equal to 11 over three. So two X is 11 over three and I wanna find um, X. So two times X, so I have to divide by two. Um, so two X uh, divided by two is equal to 11 over three. Now dividing by two is actually the same thing as multiplying by one over two. That's the same thing as dividing by two. So when I divide by two, I'm actually multiplying by one over three, one over two. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the right side. So this is the same as doing one over two or dividing this by two is the same thing. So this gives me 11 over six is equal to X. Right, so then my intercept then is 11 over six and zero. Okay, good. And then for my Y, I'm gonna do my Y intercept for number 10. All right, so for the Y intercept, I'm actually gonna do a different trick just so you see different ways of doing this. So I have two X minus two over three is equal to three over four Y plus three. All right, so for this one, um, X has to be zero. So I'm gonna substitute that. So two times zero minus two over three is equal to three over four Y plus three. Um, so that gives me negative two over three is equal to three over four Y plus three. This became zero. All right, so now that I have that, what I'm gonna do, another way that you can do this, instead of like um, keeping them as fractions, you can actually get rid of the fractions. What you do is look for the LCM, which is the least common multiple. It doesn't really have to be the LCM. You could use like a multiple, any multiple of these two numbers would work, but the LCM would make it simpler. Um, so a common multiple of four and three is 12, right? Um, you can easily find it usually by just multiplying four and three, you get 12. So I'm gonna multiply every piece of this by 12 so that I don't change my equation. And then that will help me to get rid of the fractions. So I do that to the left side. So 12 times negative two over three, is equal to 12 times three over four y plus 12 times three. So here, three goes into 12 four times. And so that gives me four times negative two. So that's negative eight is equal to four goes into 12 three times. So nine y plus 12 times three is 36. So here I've avoided the fractions, which is awesome. Um, and so now I'm just finding y. So I subtract 36 from both sides. That gives me nine Y over here because this goes to zero. And then here I have negative eight minus 36, which should be negative 44. Um, and then to find Y, I divide both sides by nine. And so my Y then is negative 44 over nine. So my intercept becomes zero, negative 44 over nine. All right, so that's it. That's it for finding the X and Y intercepts when you have various equations. So we're gonna move into something else. And um, we're gonna talk about point slope formula, um, slope intercepts, that kind of thing. When you have different, when you're giving different things, how to solve for um, the, how to use that to find your point slope formula and your slope intercept form. So that's what we're gonna move into. All right, so, um, any questions, comments so far? <laughs> okay, no, okay, all right, let's keep going. Um, all right, so I have this point, so I'm on number 22. So what I'm given here is I'm given a point and the slope. So the question says, find the equation of the line using the point slope formula, then write all the final equations using the slope intercept form. So basically we're gonna start with our point slope formula and then manipulate that to get to our slope intercept form. And we're gonna end with our slope intercept form. Okay, so what's the point slope formula? So point slope formula, that is gonna be um, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, right? So here, this y1 and this x1 are actually from the point. So usually you have a point, some kind of point, um, x1, y1, and then you can kind of plug those in there. And then your x here and your y, you can notice that we didn't have any um, 
subscripts here. So those are going to, there's no subscript. So those are going to stay as X and Y. And then you're going to substitute your slope. This M is your slope. And then once you have that, you have your point slope formula. You have that all set once you substitute all those values. Then you can kind of play around with it, manipulate it, and then um, find your slope intercept form. All right, so let's start with the first one. So we're given a point zero three. So once we have a point, we know that's going to be our X1, Y1, all set. So all we have to do is plug those in there. Good. Um, and then we are also given the slope, which is very nice. So M is going to be 2 over 3. So now all we have to do is plug that in. So I have y minus y1, which is three. So y minus three is equal to my slope two over three and then times x minus x1 is gonna be zero. All right, so that just gives me, so I have that point slope form. That just gives me y minus three, two over three times x, right? x minus zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna manipulate this to get my, slope intercept form. So just as a recap, slope intercept form um, is y is equal to mx plus b, where looking at it, at it, you can immediately tell that this is my slope and this b here is my y intercept, right? It's the value of y when x is zero. If I were to make x zero here, then m times zero is zero, and then y is equal to b. So this is my y-intercept. So this is called a slope-intercept form. So I want this here to look like that. Well, if you can tell, if you can look at it, it's like almost like that, right? I have some number times my x, which is my slope, 2 over 3 times x. So that's already set. So all I need is that intercept right there. So I'm going to add, uh, get rid of the 3 and um, move it to the other side. So I have um, 2 over 3x. So I in order to just get y by itself, I'm going to add 3 over here and add 3 to this side to keep my balance. So that gives me y plus 0, right, because negative 3 plus 3. So y is equal to 2 over 3x plus 3. And I'm done. This is the slope-intercept form. I have my slope and my intercept of 3. Cool. All right. So let's try the next one, number 20. Um, well, 23 is the same thing as this. So I'm actually going to skip that one. And then I'm going to try number 24. So 24 says X intercept is one and I have another point. Okay. So this is a different thing, right? I'm given some information about an X intercept and then I'm given a point. I'm not given a slope. So what do I do? So let's remind ourselves of the slope point slope form. So Y minus Y one is equal to M X minus X one. All right, and then our slope intercept is y is equal to mx plus b. All right, so now I have this point, negative two, six. That's what I'm given. And then I'm told that the x-intercept is one, right? Whenever I hear x-intercept is one, that's basically I'm given a point. Why? Because I know at the x-intercept, y is zero, right? So it's always some x and then zero. And I'm told that the x-intercept is one, so that means the x is one. So I have a point one zero at the x-intercept. Good. Why is this important? If I have two points, I can use that to find my slope. So slope um, m is y two. It's usually rise over run, and so y two minus y one. So it's the change in y over the change in x. So x two minus x one. All right. It doesn't matter which one I use as x two x one. I just have to be consistent. So. All right, I'm going to make um, this my, yeah, I'm going to make this my x2, y2, and then I'm going to make this my x1, y1. I usually try to avoid negatives, but it's not always possible. All right, so here, m is equal to, so what's y2? y2 is 0, and then y1 is 6. So I have 0 minus 6, and then x2 is 1 minus negative 2, right? Okay. All right. So that gives me zero minus six is negative six. Um, one minus negative two. So this actually becomes a positive, right? It's like you're, um, you're negating the negative. Um, and so you kind of take that negative away. So that becomes a positive. So I have one plus two. So that gives me three. And so negative six divided by three is negative two. All right. So I have my slope of negative two, and now I'm ready to use my point slope formula. So that gives me um, y minus y1. All right, so this was the initial point that I was given. So I'm just going to go with this one. 
my y1 would be six, y minus six. Um, but it doesn't matter. As long as you have a point on the line, it should work regardless. Um, that's the beauty of this uh, kind of formula. So y minus six is equal to negative two and then um, x minus um, x1, which is negative two. All right, so I have y minus six is equal to negative two x plus two is what I have. Now I'm gonna change this to um, slope intercept form, right? Cause that's what I'm told to do. So let me just move to another slide. So I have one minus y minus six um, is equal to negative two, I think x plus two. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of solve this out. So I keep my y minus six here, but here I distribute two, negative two times x is negative two x. And then I also do the same thing here, negative two times two is minus four, negative four. All right, so now that I have that, um, I'm still, I'm gonna um, put this in this form, mx plus b. So I have, okay, cool. I already have this set mx here. Um, I just need my b. So I have to um, kind of isolate x, y, I get y by itself. So I add six here, I add six here. So that gives me y plus zero. So just y is equal to negative two x and then plus. So I get negative four plus six. So that's positive two plus two. So y is equal to negative two x plus two for that one. So that is cool. All right, so let's see. Um, this is gonna be similar. I'm not gonna so, uh, solve this one, but this is gonna be similar here. What you would do is you would, it's basically almost the same thing, except this is your y-intercept. And so your point is actually gonna be zero, two, because x has to be zero. And then the other point is four, negative one. So you use that to figure out the slope. And then once you figure out the slope, you can use this point to, um, or any point actually, or this point to figure out your equation. So the same steps. All right, and then um, 26 and 27, I'm also gonna skip those. Um, actually, no, let me just do one of them. I'm gonna do this one with all the negatives. So I have two points. So this is basically, it follows from this one, right? This one, we had that step of coming up with the point ourselves. And then after we got the point, we found the slope. This one, they already give us the point. So our first step is to find the slope. Again, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's just call this um, x1, y1, x2, y2, all right? Um, and so if we plug that in, m is equal to, so y2 is gonna be negative six minus y1 is 10 over x2 is five minus negative three. All right, so that gives us here, it's gonna give us negative 16. And then at the bottom, it's gonna give us, this becomes a plus like the last time, so that's eight. So when you divide that, that's negative two for our slope. Okay, so once we have that point slope form, again, y minus y1 is equal to m and then x minus x1. So let's just plug, and we can use any of these points. We can use this, this, it will all come up to the same equation. So I'm just gonna keep what I have here as x1, y1. So it's y minus uh, 10 for y1 is equal to, my slope is negative two and then x minus um, negative three. All right, so I have negative two um, x plus three and y minus 10. And so once I have this, I'm trying to put it in uh, slope intercept form. So y is equal to mx plus b. So let's just multiply that out. Negative two times x is negative two x. Negative two times three is six, negative six. So minus six and then y minus 10. All right, so I have my slope and my x. I just need the um, intercept. So I add 10 here, add 10 here. So that gives me y is equal to negative two x plus four. So this is my slope intercept form and I am done with this one. Okay, so we're gonna try the last two because that include, that gives us new information. It's different from the rest. We have one that says parallel here and then perpendicular. So we're gonna figure that out. So, um, so some line is parallel to this and passes through the point that. 
Okay. So once you hear, so the line that we are looking for is parallel to this line. Once you hear that two lines are parallel, they're going to be like something like this, or they can be, yeah, they never, ever meet, right? They never, ever meet. And how would that be possible? They have, or it can be even something like this. They have the same slope. That's why. So they're going to rise and run at the same rate. And so they're never going to touch each other. They're never going to cross each other. So if that's the case, then if we can figure out the slope here, we can just take that slope and use it in our new line because they're going to have the same slope. All right. So if we have that, let's see. This, thankfully, this is already in this form. Y is equal to mx plus b, right? There's y and then there's some number times x plus five, right? So here, this is our m. Our slope is going to be two. So the slope of our, the line that we are looking for is also two because they have the same slope. So M is equal to two. And then it also passes through the point four, three. So we can make this our X one, Y one, and we're ready to put this in the point slope form. So Y minus Y one is equal to M X minus X one. So we just plug those in. So we have Y minus um, three is equal to two times X minus four. Right, so we have our point slope form. Now we're gonna change that to slope intercept form. So y minus three is equal to now two times x is two x, and then two times negative four is negative eight, so minus eight. All right, so once we have that, y minus three is equal to two x minus eight. We want it to be in this form. So we're gonna add three here, add three here, so we can get y by itself. So y is equal to two x, minus five, right? Negative eight plus three is negative five. And so that's it. We have our equation in y uh, slope intercept form. All right, now let's try perpendicular. What does that mean? Okay, so if a line is perpendicular, so if two lines are perpendicular to each other, right? There's a 90 degree, degree angle uh, between them, but there's something interesting about their slope. So the product of their slope, so when you multiply their slopes together, you get negative one. So let's say slope one, maybe M1 times M2, okay, is equal to negative one, right? Okay, so usually when you have the slope from one of them, all you have to do is to, to get the slope of the other one is to flip that slope um, and then make it negative. So it's, we call it the negative reciprocal, negative reciprocal. All right. So if, if, for instance, if so, if one slope, let's say M1 was two and M2 would be negative one over two, because when you multiply them, you should get negative one. So two times negative one over two is equal to negative two over two, which is equal to negative one. Right. If one of them is, let's say it's negative three, right. Then you still flip it. So that gives you one over three, but you negate negative three. So once you negate negative three, you get positive, right? The negative of a, a negative number would be a positive. So you get positive one over three. So that when you multiply them, you get um, negative three over three, which is equal to um, negative one, right? So yeah, negative reciprocal. Let's remember that you flip it and then you negate it. And if it's already negative, then it becomes positive. Okay, so our line that we're looking for is perpendicular to this one. So this is going to give us information about the slope. So we need to figure out the slope for this line of this line so that it can inform our slope, the line that we're looking for. So this line is 3y is equal to x minus 4. So in order to easily figure out the slope, um, I need y is equal to mx plus b, right? Right now I have this 3 in the way. So I'm going to get rid of the 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by one over three or divide by three. It's the same thing. So let's say I divide um, everything by three. So three Y divided by three is equal to X divided by three minus four over three. I have to do it to everything so that I don't change my equation. So now I have three divided by three, that's just one. So Y is equal to, now this is X over three. It's the same as one over three times X, right? Cause one times X is just X. So I'm writing it this way so we can easily see what our, um, slope is. All right, minus four over three. Okay, good. So mx plus b, our m is the thing attached to our x. So our m here is one over three. So if the m here is one over three, then the other m, because they're perpendicular, so let's just say m2, 
this is going to be, you're going to flip this one. So three, and then you're going to negate it. So negative three. So when you multiply, you get negative one. All right. So we have our slope and then we have a point and then we can figure out our slope, um, point slope form. So that's y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. All right. And then um, our slope from the previous slide was negative three. So this is negative three. And then we have, this is our x1, y1. So we're going to plug those in. So y minus one is equal to negative three x minus negative two. So this gives me y minus one is equal to negative three x plus two. And then I'm going to put that in slope intercept form. So that's y minus one is equal to negative three x, because I'm going to multiply that. And then minus negative three times two is negative six. All right. So y minus one is equal to negative three x minus six. And then um, I'm going to add one here to get y by itself, add one. So that gives me y is equal to negative three x minus five. And as you can see, my slope is there, negative three. Okay, so that's the end of this one, this section where we talk about um, point slope form, slope intercept form, and um, that. So we're going to move on to uh, an interesting problem, but this is going to bring out the distance between two points. It's also going to bring out the midpoint and that. So we're going to solve that. Okay. So I have this point, this problem here where it's giving me this graph. The graph is kind of hard to see. It's kind of small, um, but I can, I actually, we can still work with it. Well, we need, we need like two points, two main points, and then we can kind of figure it out. So let's see. Let me see if I can make it a bit bigger first. All right, cool. So first off, I'm just gonna figure out what the endpoints are. So this point here is five on the x-axis and two on the y-axis, so it's five, two. And then this point here is negative three on the x-axis and four on the y-axis, so it's negative three, four. All right, so I know those two points. Okay, so the question says, find the distance between the two endpoints using the distance formula. Okay, the distance formula is actually, I don't know if, if you're familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, that's where the distance formula comes from. And so if you have, let's say, we know that for a right angle triangle, right, if you have a right angle triangle, then this is 90 degrees. And let's say this is A side A, B, and the length here is C. Um, we're told that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. That's classic Pythagorean theorem. Um, why is this important? Well, when you have a line between two points, you can always kind of form a right angle triangle with that line. So something like this, right? And then you can use, so this distance here is a horizontal distance. It's basically the distance between this um, five and then negative three right? So that's, it's actually eight. So the distance between them is eight, right? Five minus negative three. Um, so that becomes five plus three is eight. So moving from negative three to five, that's eight steps. One, two, three, you're going to go through eight steps to get there. Okay. So that's eight. This side is eight. And then this side up here is just going from two, right? Because we've extended this. So we know that this is two and then this is four. So we're going on the vertical distance. We're going four uh, to four. So two to four, the difference between them is two, right? From two to four is just two steps. All right, so knowing this, this can help us to kind of figure out that, right? Because if we have a right angle triangle, and let's say this side, let's call this side D for distance, right? So our distance here is going to be, um, sorry, according to the Pythagorean theorem, that would be, oops, um, one second. Okay. According to the Pythagorean theorem, the distance would be d squared is equal to um, this eight squared uh, plus two squared, right? That's what we would get. All right. So d would be equal to the square root of eight squared plus two squared. Okay. This is where our distance formula comes from. So um, how did we get eight? We got eight by subtracting. We did five minus negative three. But what's five? Five is just, let's say, um, x2, right? It's one of the x's. And then three is x1. So we actually got eight by doing um, 
x2 minus x1 and then squaring that. That's where the 8 came from. And then for y, um, this is what, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, okay. So if this is my x2, this is my y2. Good, I just want to keep that. And this is my uh, y1. All right. So again, we got um, y2. So it would be y2 minus y1. So that's 2 minus 4, which is fine. Because 2 minus 4 gives us negative 2. But negative 2 squared is what we're looking for. And that's still positive. So it doesn't matter. Um, but it's still uh, y2 minus y1 squared. So this is the distance form and the square root of that is that this is the distance formula. So now we don't have to go through the whole Pythagorean theorem every time we're looking for the distance between two points. We can just take this formula and um, kind of assign each point x1, y1, x2, y2, and then just plug those numbers into the formula and figure out the distance. So here, um, again, we have our distance here would be d is equal to square root of um, 8 squared, which is 64, plus 2 squared, which is 4. So it's going to be the square root of 68. Um, it says to round to three decimal places. So we could do this on a calculator. Um, let's see. Square root of 68. I have d is equal to 8.24621. One, three decimal places, one, two, three. This here is less than five. So I'm just going to keep it as D is equal to 8.246. All right. And that is, yeah. So I'm going to leave that like that. And that's the distance between those two points. Okay. So the next one says, find the coordinates of the midpoint. So we're talking about midpoint now. Um, all right. So for midpoint, the formula for midpoint is... Basically, x1 plus x2 over 2, right? And then um, for y, it's y1 plus y2 over 2, right? So if I have that, let's see. So it feels like, it feels like you're averaging your x and then averaging your y points um, to get your midpoint. All right, so if I have that, I'm just going to plug those in. And it doesn't matter which one I use as x2, y2. So um, my points from the, previous, from the previous slide, my points were um, 5, 2, and negative 3, 4. So I have 5. Oops. Mm. All right, I'm sorry. I'm having, let me check something. All right, so I have five, two, and then negative, yeah, negative three, four. All right, so if I'm gonna find the midpoint here, let's just say this is x1, y1, x2, y2, and then plug those in. So for my x, I'm gonna have five plus negative three over two. And then for my y, I'm gonna have two plus four over two. Um, and so that's going to give me, so that's going to give me here, uh, five plus negative three is two over two. And then this is six over two. So I have one, three for my midpoint. So let's, if we were to plot that, that would be around here, right? Which it kind of looks right, right? It kind of looks like it's the middle of the, the two points. All right, so one, three. So that's my midpoint. Um, so it's fairly simple. All right, so the other questions say, find the distance that three, four is from the origin. So we're not gonna go through this because we don't have a lot of time left, but the origin is basically here, right? This is the origin and the point, the coordinates for that would be zero, zero. All right, so it's basically the same thing. You're gonna apply your distance formula um, but you're going to um, do it from negative 3, 4, so this point to here. This is what you're going to use. So let's say our negative 3, 4, and then 0, 0. So this could be x2, y2, x1, y1. 
And our distance formula is D is equal to square root of um, X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared, right? So we just plug those in. Um, X2 is negative three. So I have negative three minus zero squared plus um, Y2 is four, so four minus zero squared. So it's basically, because they're zero, zero, it's basically the same as just squaring these points. All right, so I have um, D is equal to square root of negative three squared, which is nine, um, plus four squared, which is uh, 16. So I have D is equal to square root of 25. So D is equal to five. So that distance there is gonna be five. And then you do something similar for this, right? Um, except yeah, when you do it for this one, you're, the points would be five, two. So you'd end up saying D is equal to, and we know that since it's zero, zero, we're just, we can just square these points. So basically five squared plus two squared. Um, so that gives us D is equal to root of 25 plus four, so square root of 29. And then you can figure that out and then round it to three decimal places. All right, let's do it so that we can answer the um, question, which one is closer to the origin? Uh, so basically this is this one. Uh, so square root of 29, let's see. Square root of 29 is, all right, 5.38516 into three decimal places. That would be, yeah, 5.385. All right, so which one is closer to the origin? Well, which one has a shorter distance from the origin? So that's gonna be this one, right? Because this one is a longer distance from the origin. So this, we're gonna go with um, negative three, four as closer to the origin. Okay, so we've answered 43 to 47. All right, it's 846, so we still have a little bit of time. Okay, so I have this question here, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, it's basically, it says, given the graph of the rectangle shown and the coordinates of its vertices, prove that the di diagonals are of the rectangle are of equal length, right? This is an interesting problem. Um, but if you think about it, so they want you to prove that this diagonal is equal to this diagonal or the diagonals are of equal length. Um, when you think about that, this is just the distance formula, right? Um, so I have this point here and this point here. So the diagonal is the length of that line, of that um, line segment from here to here. It is that, that length, right? And this is a right angle triangle, right? So you can apply that whole distance formula thing that we talked about. So we're basically finding the distance between this point and this point. That's what we're doing. Um, so D, let's say D1 for this diagonal, for diagonal one, the distance there is square root of, so again, it's X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. And so once we have that, um, X2, so D1 is equal to X2 minus X1. So let's just give that X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So that's gonna be um, 10 minus negative six squared plus negative one minus five squared. Okay, so this gives us D1 is equal to 10 minus negative six. That negative becomes positive because uh, the two of them together, it's 16 squared. Plus this is negative six squared. All right, if I rewrite this, this D1 is still gonna be equal to root of 16 squared plus negative six squared is the same thing as six squared, right? Cause that square takes away the negative. Okay, negative times negative is positive. Okay, so I have this, I'm gonna leave it as this and see if I can get the same thing for this other diagonal here. All right, so if I look at diagonal two, right? The points, the endpoints here are 10, 5, and negative 6, negative 1. So this, let's say this is my um, x2, y2. This is my x1, y1. So I'm going to find the distance there as well. So d2, or distance 2, diagonal 2, um, that's going to be, um, again, I'm using this formula. So x2 is 10. 
So 10 minus x1 is negative six uh, squared, and then plus five minus ne negative one squared. All right, so 10 minus negative six, that is um, 16, positive 16, because that canceled. So we have 16 squared plus five minus negative one is the same as five plus one. So six, five plus one squared is six squared. So D2 is equal to that. Now, do you see that these two are equal? They are the same. And so we have shown that D1 is the same as D2. So we've shown that for rectangles, the diagonals have the same length. So that's a pretty cool application of the um, distance formula. Okay, cool. All right, so here are a few word problems that we can kind of work through. We have 11 minutes more, so I think we can kind of work through these. Um, okay, so it says the coordinates on a map for San Francisco are 5317, and those for Sacramento are 12378. Note the coordinates represent miles. Okay, find the distance between the cities to the nearest mile. So we're just going to start with that. Um, let's kind of draw this out. So let's say I have um, San Francisco 53. So that means 53 on the x-axis. So here, let's say 53, and then 17. So let's say that's around here. Let's say this is 17. Um, and this is going to be San Francisco. And our Sacramento is 123. So that's going to be after here for the x. So let's say it's around here. It's not drawn to scale. So 123 and then 78, it's going to be up here somewhere. Um, so let's just say it's over here somewhere. So 78, all right, so this is Sacramento. All right, and we're supposed to find the distance between them. So again, this, this, that's the line that we're looking for. And we come to our distance formula, y2, oops, um, it doesn't matter which one I put first, but I'll just be consistent. Um, so I have x2 minus x1 squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that gives me d is equal to, now I just have to assign them at this point. So I have, this is 53, 17. This is 123, 78. So let's say this is our x2, y2, x1, y1. So that gives me root of x2 is 123 minus 53. Um, squared plus y2 78 minus 17 squared. So that gives me d is equal to 123 minus 53 is 70. So 70 squared plus this one is going to give me um, 61, right? 78, yeah, squared. Okay. So that would give me, we can, we, we, they don't ask us to compare them. So you would work this out and basically figure out that distance there. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next thing. So yeah, you'd square both, um, add them, and then find the square root of that. You can use a calculator for that. All right. So the next one is, um, it says San Jose's coordinates are 76, um, negative 12. All right. So let's say we were to plot that. Um, 76 would be in between here somewhere. So let's say it's here, 76. Negative 12 would be down here somewhere. So let's say it's right here. So negative 12. So we're here. And we're supposed to find the distance between San Jose and San Francisco. So San Jose is the new one. And San Francisco is right here. So we're finding that distance there. Um, so again, same thing. San Jose is 76, negative 12. And then San Francisco is 53, 17. So we just need to assign again. Um, so let's say x2, um, x2, y2, x1, y1. And then we plug that in our formula. So we're using this formula here, x2 minus x1, that's 76 minus 53 squared um, plus y2, so negative 12, minus 17 squared, right? And I believe so. Okay. So then I have D is equal to 76 minus 53. That would be uh, 23. So 23 squared plus um, negative 12 minus 17 squared. Uh, so that gives me 
um, negative 29 squared. Um, so that would be square root of 23 squared plus 29 squared, because 29 squared is the same as negative 29 squared. Um, so let me just I have, let me just finish with this one. So if I did that 23 squared plus 29 squared root of that, it gives me about 37. 0.0135. The question asks to the nearest mile. So I don't really care about the decimals. I'm just going to say it's about um, 37 miles. And that's it for this one. Okay.